usual thoughts, but to emphasize them. Jesus was the son of God, but he was also a great teacher. Before Jesus, there had been other religious leaders like Moses and others who had told to the Jews very many things, the Ten Commandments, the what. But when Jesus came, I think he realized that when you talk about too many things, people don't get confused. That's why he said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and the rest will be added unto you. Trying to show what is the main point. There are so many points, but what is the main one? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and the rest will be added unto you. Then when it comes to the commandments, he, he said there are two great, great commandments. Love God with all your heart and all your might, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. He says if you get these two, the rest will be easier for you to understand. Now, this is the same issue. When you, you, you see what people are talking about, leaders of this one, of that group, you can see that people can get lost and fail to know what is core. The NLM from our student days we are telling you on the side of development, seek ye first the homestead incomes and the rest will be added unto you. This is what we have been telling you. Uh, however, you, you hear people talking about roads, about what, all this. Uh, even if those assets are there, but if you don't resolve the issue of homestead incomes, you're wasting your time. And you can address the issue of homestead incomes, even when the infrastructure is not so good, and you find people have income. At one time, Ubuntu was cut off from Fort Porto. There was no good road between Fort Porto and, uh, and Wundubijo. And that's when ADF attacked the Wundubijo people. But when we went there to fight, we found the people had good incomes. Although the road was bad, they had cocoa, they had coffee, they had uh, apple and rice, they had palm oil, the, all, all those could be transported <coughs> to Fort Porto, even on a bad road, because they are not so delicate. They were not such delicate pro products. Cocoa, if cocoa is dry and coffee is dry, even if the road is not so good, you, you will transport it and get money. And palm oil. So therefore, I want again to emphasize the issue of homestead incomes the issue of wealth creation. This part of the world, there is also a cultural problem. Some of the people don't know our history very well. But this part of the, of, of the world is really mainly a place of wealth creators. In the villages, if you don't work for wealth, they call you a chirare, a vagabond, if you don't work for, 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 for wealth. This, was, this is our culture. So much so that by the time the Europeans came here, they found, found a lot of wealth here. 
I have asked my people to get me some quotations. Like, for instance, from, because our own people are not writing, so we depend on, on oral history. But these foreigners who came here first time wrote. Here I have got a quotation from Huntington Speak uh, in his book, The Discovery of the Source of the Nile, by John Huntington Speak, on page 128, in quotes, Going on with the march, we next came to Ndongo, a perfect garden of plant plantains. Perfect garden of plantains. The whole country was rich, most surprisingly so. <laughs> this is a foreigner who had never been here before. The same streaky A, 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 a gracious sandstones prevailed as in Karagwe. Karagwe in Tanzania. He had been to Karagwe in Tanzania and he had found the same gardens like he now he found this he was by this time he was in Uganda now. There was nothing in fact that would not have grown here. If it liked moist, if it if it liked moisture, and a, a temperate heat, it was a perfect paradise for Negroes. <laughs> That's what he writes. So it was a perfect paradise for Negroes. As fast as they sowed, they were sure of a crop, without much trouble. Though I must say, they kept their hearts and their gardens in excellent order. This is 1862. 1862. This is like uh, uh, almost 100 years ago. Uh, this is a foreigner. Finding wealth creators here. Not loiterers. Now, that was Huntington speak, 1862. Talking about what he had seen in Karagwe, Tanzania. Now he's talking, by this time I think he had entered Uganda. Now, then a few years later, in 1889, another European, Huntington, uh, Henry Morton Stanley, writing in, in the book in, in Darkest Africa, volume two by, by Henry Stanley, he writes in quotes, crossing a narrow ne neck of land, descended into the basin of the Rizi. The Rizi is this river in the Barara area. The Rizi. By degrees, the misty atmosphere of this, re of this region was clearing. And, now, and we could now see about five miles distance and the contour of the pastoral plateau of Ankori. It was not by any means at its best. I think it was like a dry season. It was well into the drought season. He's writing in Old English. The dry season had commenced two months previously. Hilly range, steep corn, hammock and plain, were clothed with grass ripe for fire, dry grass. The herds were numerous. <laughs> the cows were numerous. And all as fat as prize cattle. All as fat as prize cattle. In the valley, we had passed over 4,000 cattle of the longhorn species. The basin of the Rizi, which we were now in, and which was the heart of Ankori, possessed scores of the finest herds of cattle I had never seen before. This is a white man writing about you people. 